With Parashat Tezriya and Mitzorah, we come to a reading which discusses an issue that is for all intents and purposes quite removed from our normal understanding and recognition of human life. The idea of tzara'at, of these skin lesions, these malignant skin lesions, which are not properly defined as leprosy or any other common skin condition, are things that we really just don't know, and the circumstances around them that the Torah presents are not part of our daily life because we don't have the Beit HaMikdash anymore, and we don't have the entire system and trappings that uh, would deal with such a situation. And for all we know, we don't have that situation occur to us anymore. And so it's difficult to relate to the parasha practically, but there are nonetheless ideas in the parasha, concepts in the parasha, as with all readings that don't relate to us directly in our lives, that we can learn from. Although when re read together, Tazri and Mitzorah begin and end with very normal human experiences, it begins with childbirth and ends with the normal uh, menstruation and seminal emissions of a man and a woman, and the uncleanness or the tum'ah that surrounds those things on a regular way. But the middle of the parashiot, the, the center, deals with the issue of tzara'at. There's one aspect of it that perhaps hints to something in life that is important to think on and pay attention to. The following is a law presented in the parasha. When a person sees a lesion that is identified as tzara'at on skin, it, it is considered impure if it is a particular color, but also it, it needs to be malignant, which means it needs to grow beyond its original borders. It has to be seen as spreading. And when it is seen as spreading, it is considered tame, it is considered uh, spiritually unclean, and that person needs to speak out that they are spiritually unclean, they have to step out of the camp, and it is recognized that this person has sarat and needs to go through the processes of uh, tahara, of purity, in order to be able to come back into the camp. But there is an interesting instance that the Torah presents, and that is, what if a person's entire body erupts in the tzara'at? That means from head to toe, a person's skin looks like they have tzara'at. And so it can't be malignant, meaning there's nowhere else for it to grow. It has essentially spread entirely throughout the body. The law is that that person is clean. That person is tahor, they're pure, and they are not considered impure with sarad. There's something around it that I think this hints to, and that is that when there are things that seem to be peeking out from the surface, underlying elements that we find to be uncomfortable, difficult, things that we would rather remain underneath the surface, when they begin to erupt, when they begin to ooze out or ease out and start to spread, it makes us terribly uncomfortable. We feel like the things that should be behind our surface, under the surface, should remain there and that they shouldn't come out. But oftentimes things that we try to push under the surface cannot stay there. They, they erupt, they come out, they develop. And when they begin to do that, when things begin to emerge that were otherwise concealed or kept in the dark, it causes a tremendous amount of discomfort. Indeed, it causes even a tremendous amount of psychological, emotional anguish. What do we do with these things that were supposed to stay quiet and now are coming out on the surface exposed for people to see? There is a, an old common saying that says, we are only as sick as our secrets. And that means that the deeper and darker we keep things, the more we push things down that we are afraid to expose or to speak about in our lives, the sicker we become mentally, emotionally. It is not good for us to hold things in the dark. And so when things come out, begin to come out to light, we have to show them as the tzarat. We have to show them not to everyone. We have to show them to the kohen. We have to show them to a man who is dedicated to serving God, to helping us achieve purity, which essentially is what the kohen's job was in that circumstance or in that setting. It is important for us, the Torah says to us, as a concept, as an idea, that when we have things that are originally under the surface, that are kept quietly, that are 
uncomfortable when they start to emerge onto the surface, to bring them to someone that we trust, to bring them to someone that can help us with those impurities and bring them into purity, to teach us how it is that we should deal with them. It is not good to keep secrets in the dark catacombs of our lives or inside our hearts. It's important for us to be able to find somebody that we trust, to be able to find a space in which things that otherwise we are ashamed of or which we hold shame around can be spoken. Shame grows malignantly in the darkness, in the concealment, and it dies in the light. And so when it is completely exposed from head to toe, when the tzarat is simply the skin of the individual and it's worn on the outside, that person is clean. And part of the process of achieving cleanliness, or tahara, purity, when tzarat is experienced on the skin, is to speak out, tame, tame, unclean, unclean. There's something about me that I know is not necessarily something I'm proud of, not something that I, I feel I can sit with among other people. Those things, those things that we all have in various ways are dangerous to us when we keep them entirely in the dark. It is important, the Torah says to us, to show it to the Kohen or to show it to the person that can understand it, that can hear it, that can sit in the dark with us, in the shame with us, and bring light to it, because it is in the light that it dies, that it dissolves, and that ultimately we find the purity of heart again, and that we recognize that we have the ability then to incorporate it as a whole life in the holistic sense of the way that life should be. And in that, we find purity of soul, purity of mind, and purity of heart. Shabbat Shalom.